Hi, this is Roger. Thanks for dropping by. It's AM. You can tell it's AM in my videos because there will be coffee. Um, and it's just been poured out so we won't be drinking it just yet because it will be scalding hot. I drink black coffee so there's nothing in there to cool it down. Just the cup. Right, I'm. this is my birthday tree. My Japanese white pine. Given the cost of these nowadays, it is highly likely to be my only Japanese white pine ever, unless I win the lottery or something, in which case we'll have ten. <laughs> and a huge big garden with a gardener to look after them. No, we wouldn't, we wouldn't do that. Um, and as a novice, as far as Japanese white pine are concerned, I've, I'm an early riser. Yeah, I, I can't help that, it's my body clock. And this morning we were an exceptionally early riser because we needed to use the facilities. And when I looked at the clock, it was 20 to four. And I thought, there's no way I'm gonna get back to sleep. I just as well get up. But I got up with a purpose. I got up with the purpose of utilizing what would normally be wasted time. It's dark, there's nothing to do that time of day, um, apart from sit and watch YouTube videos. So we went on a hunt. We went on a hunt for information about Japanese white pine. And there's various things you can do to trees um, when we're talking pines. There's candle pinching, um, there's wiring, there's branch selection, um, there's feeding well to get extended growth. There's all sorts of things you can do to a pine. But the video, or the couple of videos that took me, that went, I went back and watched them all again, basically, was Ryan Neal. And it's because he starts and goes back. So he, te he says, why are we, always ask, why are we doing this? Not because it says it in a book. <laughs> we're doing it because we understand what we're trying to achieve. And to do that, you always have to keep working backwards. So I'm gonna start a new playlist, um, which will be my birthday tree. I'll, I'll think of a name. I haven't got that far yet. This will be the first video in it. But today, I just wanna talk about this tree to try and establish where it is in its life as a bonsai. It's not, it is a bonsai, but as far as a good bonsai is concerned, it isn't. Not yet. It can be, and hopefully with some help it will be. So, the first thing to establish is, is it a healthy tree? And I would say the simple answer to that is yes. This is a healthy tree. There's hardly any dead needles on it. There's hardly any yellowing needles on it. It's a healthy tree. So if it's a healthy tree, what can we assume? Well, we can assume it's got a pretty good root system or it wouldn't be. This is this year's growth. All these extensions, this is this year's stuff pushing on, yeah? And to be able to do that, it must have a good root system. I'm not gonna take it out of the pot. It looks like it's in Akadama. If I take it out of the pot, it'll be all over the place. Um, when I got it, it had these little organic fertilizer things placed all over it. Some of them have been lost. Um, so it's been fed this year into a good root system, which has established a good needle base. This is a good mass of foliage. So that part of the tree's development, you could say is done. Not necessarily finished, but done. It has a good strong needle mass. Now, one of Ryan Neal's um, videos that I watched was the concept of taking a tree from the mountain. So, you know, we've gone up there in early spring, late winter, early spring, we've collected our tree and we're in year one. And what do we want to do in year one? We want to get a flipping good root system because everything else we want to do is dependent on a good root system to drive the tree. So get a good root system. And then he went through the various year years worth of development to get to the point where you've got a bonsai you're reasonably happy with um, and it's a good video um, so we can say this is well past year one it has a good root system um, 
has it produced a good needle mass to be able to you get a, a cyclic effect um, when you haven't got much needle mass you need to get roots once you've got the roots you can drive the needle mass which then goes back down and drives the roots and, and you end up with this cyclic effect where the more up here the more down here the more down here the more up there work they work together we've got a good needle mass so we've, we've passed that stage of development we've got a good root system we've got good needle mass the next thing is have we got good branch structure? Now we're, now we're looking at shaping, yeah? So we've done some growing, we've got a healthy tree, we're now looking at shaping. And this tree hasn't had that done to any extent yet. I think virtually every branch this tree has ever grown is still on the tree. Now that may not need, you know, that might not be right. There might be some branches are in the way of others. Um, bearing in mind that part of the beauty of a pine is negative space as well as positive um, space and on this tree there's there is no negative space it's a bush yeah so that needs to be developed so are we at the stage where this tree could be wired and again Ryan Niels you know he, he said um, the time to wire really is when everything's hardened off and there was a lovely little statement. These little snippets of information just sneak out of... You might have to watch 40 minutes of video to get a 10 second snippet that sticks in your head. How do you know when a white pine has hardened off? The sheaths fall off. Now, I'm not absolutely certain I know what the sheaths look like. But I don't see any sheaths around the needles. So maybe they have already fallen off. Maybe I don't know what I'm looking for. Um, but at this time of year, mid-October, on the south coast of the UK, which is, well, this has been grown inland a bit, um, the Windy Bank Nursery is, is south London. It's inside the um, London or orbiter or orbital. Hold on there. <laughs> we need mouth food. <laughs> Unicorn juice. Um, it's inside the London Orbital, the M25, but it's still what I would call outside of London. It, you're still in the countryside, there's still lots of greenery. <laughs> yeah, it's not just masses of houses. Um, so that's the area where it is. So not too far from the south coast, although it is inland a bit. Um, so it's at the stage, I believe, where we could do some branch selection and some initial styling which is basically getting clutter out of the way and having a look at the branches we've got and which ones we want to keep so we could be looking at the the basic shape of the trunk there's not much can be done with that i've been given that but there is a point from here upwards we've got a long straight bit and um, Ken said that that is there to thicken up the whole tree and will be best left for a good couple of years yet yeah, to enable everything to thicken up and strengthen up. But you have to bear in mind this is a dominant apex. It will be drawing strength from the rest of the tree. In doing so, you've got this energy going up, going back down, going back up. Things thicken up, yes. But things lower down could start to get weaker due to the strength up here. So although this needs to stay, I don't believe it needs as much foliage on it. So some thinning is going to happen up here. Also, the decision, am I going to keep that part of the tree? Because it's got quite a long straight bit. But that long straight bit is still bendable. So we could incorporate that and end up with a taller tree. I mean, eventually you could say, well, you'll get a taller tree anyway if you choose a branch lower down. Um, we like to have taper in a tree, but I don't like taper that looks like that. Personally, to me, that, with little twigs sticking out, is not natural. That is. Yeah? A tree has got natural taper. And when you look at a tree, 
out there. I'm looking at some out of the window now. That tape is always there, but it's not like that, is it? It's not from that to that in that height. That just doesn't exist. That doesn't happen. So I don't particularly like that. So I could incorporate this top bit. I could get a bend in there. It would take some several turns of pretty thick wire and it would probably take several years to set but it could be done so that's a decision to be made down the line however everything below that can be styled so we can look at wiring so as I did on my Scots Pine what we must do is make sure that places like this that have a fork are clear because in here we might get some back budding we might yeah but the the point of pinching has long since passed <laughs> for a start because um, this year's growth has been allowed to extend yeah and that's given the tree some strength and some energy so that if some of the tree is removed all of that energy will be diverted to what's left. So next year we could get some hefty growth. Again, if we will have to decide next year, are we feeding for growth or not? Well, unless you've got the bonsai you're happy with, then you ought to, I presume, still be growing some things. So I think that we ought to wire the lower branches here. Now another thing that you get from Ryan is the, the way trees work um, and some of this I've already got in my head from years ago um, but basically you've got this concept of every twig on this tree wants to become the top of the tree, the apex. It wants to be the biggest, longest, strongest twig branch on the tree and to achieve that it's got a hormone called auxins in the tip and what that does is it concentrates growth in that area yeah well that's, that can be good if that's what you want <laughs> but also it's a suppressant because it stops buds below it developing so just because you've got some back budding on a branch doesn't mean to say they're going to grow they might be there but at that point they're only buds so how do you get them to grow then? You have to stop them being suppressed. So you need to take a tip off to get rid of the auxin that's suppressing it. And then the energy will be pushed into those areas because they're no longer being suppressed. If you don't suppress, uh, unsuppress them, then all the energy is going to go to where those auxins are. That's what they're designed to do, to get it to grow. So we would need to think about some branch selection and you have to bear in mind already I can see that up here the strength of the growth up here compared with the strength of the growth down here this is weaker the lower part of this tree is not as strong as the upper part so we've got to reduce the upper part without taking the strength the overall strength out of the tree. So we've got some thinning out to do. And I think to be able to develop this tree over the longer term, I think we need, see this has actually got some back budding. There is some already there. Um, and at the moment, there are no tips to be able to take off. Auxins will follow the lead. Yeah, now, so all the auxins are in the tips, but I can't take any of these tips off yet. We've got to wait for the next flush of growth. All the buds are tucked down inside here. The, the next, next year's flush, the next year's candles are down inside these here, there. So we've got to wait for those to grow before we can remove the auxins, because at the moment, if I remove them there, I've just taken the needle mass off. Well, that's going to reduce the strength of the tree. That's not what we want. We want to increase it. So I think we'll wire the lower section so that we've got our shape. And then it comes to redistributing the energy. We will have done that partially by thinning out this top section or deciding we're going to keep it 
and trying to get some shape into this straight bit of trunk but we will still need to reduce the strength of the apex because it's drawing the energy away from these lower branches so we will have to have a fiddle with that but I think wiring the lower branches will give us a better clue as to what the goal is what are we trying to create here because at the moment um, I haven't even finalised what I call the front I've still got that decision to make it is probably going to be this side because the wiring scars on this side are less but then you have to sort of think well if it stays at this angle our first branch is on an inside bend which is it's not only a no-no as far as the guidelines rules are concerned it doesn't actually look that good so would we take that branch off and then we'd have a first branch on the outside of the bend which is far more constructive so decisions however if this was turned over more like that then that first branch might be more useful but decisions I'm, at the moment I'm probably just going to leave it in that sort of shape I mean it's got some um, movement on the trunk I might bring it forward a bit so that the trunk's more upright because at the moment the whole tree is growing away there's nothing coming back towards us now maybe that can be achieved with this long straight bit up here I don't know whether it would bend that far but we could also achieve it by doing a trunk chop there and make this the new leader this is a good strong branch here make that the new lead it's already got side branches to con continue a branch structure up the trunk so that would be a possibility take everything off except this but that would be rather an abrupt bit of uh, taper still a decision to make I think that the first thing to do on this is to thin out the top irrespective of whether it's going to be kept or not it still needs to be thinned out to get the rest of the tree balanced out so that the energy level is even throughout the whole tree um, now that doesn't mean making the whole tree weak it means make, making the weaker part stronger and to enable that to happen it needs the energy to be pushed into it this is more for next year than this year but we can establish the methodology now because now is a good time to wire I believe the sheaths are off <laughs> I'm gonna have to, I have to try and find some pictures of what these sheaths look like but there is some signs of back budding in places um, some of these lower branches have got some good structure they, they just need the shape defined yeah so that all of the buds and all of the shoots point upwards because a branch or a shoot that points downwards is not going to get enough light so it won't work as, as a functioning branch the needles on that branch are not going to do their job properly because they're not going to get the light so everything needs to be pointing towards the light and in doing so you create your shape you know so there we go so another thing to look for will be towards the ends of the branches has it been pinched in the past or have the candles been left to grow and the, the normal way of telling is it, if it's been looked after the chances are everywhere where there was one there became two where there was two there became four providing the tree was strong enough to do that so where there was one and there's now three the work probably hasn't been done <laughs> so we'll do it now yeah taking a few branches off here and there to get some space is not a bad thing not a bad thing at all so I think we will wire and I'm I'm virtually certain this branch I keep touching down here is gonna to have to come off it's on the inside of a bend it just doesn't look elegant and then this one can be can be brought down and that one can be taken across but I think we need to get some wire on here um, I was going to just thinking 
Every time on a pine you're thinking of taking a branch off, you have to ask yourself, would it make a gin? Rather than, because once it's off, it's off. You can't put it back on again, can you? However, would it make a nice gin? Well, coming out of the inside of a bend like that at the bottom of the tree, probably not. It's not a thick enough branch to, to make a good one anyway. So I don't think we'll do that. So, video one in this list of, you know, this, this playlist can go on for years. It's, it's not, it's not, you know, but it won't get added too frequently. You know, we're looking at the life of a tree from the point I got it up to the point where I can, I'm happy to say this is now a good bonsai. And that ain't going to happen overnight, not by a long shot. So um, my understanding of single flush pines, specifically white pines, has dramatically increased as a result of needing to get up early this morning and having nothing else to do but watch YouTube videos. And some good stuff has gone in there. Some of it's going to come out the other side. Not all of it will be retained, but I've taken all of the videos that I thought were useful and stuck them in a place where I can get at them again without having to search for them again this time. So uh, we'll get there. But I think the initial thing to do is to, is to literally get some shape into this tree because once you've got your branch structure and you've got your movement with your tips flicked up at the end, you've got more energy going into that branch than you had perhaps with the tips pointing outwards or pointing downwards. And it's the excess energy really that's going to produce the back budding. Yeah? And to allow those back buds to develop, the auxins that are suppressing them need to be removed, which can't be done now. That's a next year thing. Um, so next year, the important thing will be, because again, <laughs> Ryan Neal always works backwards. If you get to the point where you're going to pinch your candles, why are you doing it first? Yeah? <laughs> and... To get to the point where you can, you need strength in the tree to get those candles to grow in the first place. So feed and water heavily to push the candles. And then if you're pinching the candles to refine your shape, you don't want to carry on feeding at that point, do you? You just want those candles to mature with as little energy as possible, producing the shortest possible needles and the least elongation, because you've already got your shape. Well, I haven't already got my shape yet, so we may even let the candles grow next year on the lower part of the tree to gain needle mass. Decision to be made. So, an initial chat and uh, a little bit about the concept of single flush pines. You're only going to get one lot of candles and the initial decision will be we've got strong ones, medium ones and weak ones. Well the idea is to get them all the same. So the strong ones come down first well, then you'll probably find your medium ones become your strong ones. Take them down. This is not a day's event. The candle Sorting out the candles, is a, it happens over a period of a couple of weeks under normal circumstances because you'll get those that will push first, yeah, and those that will delay. So it's a, it's, it's a permanently active activity until they're all where you want them. And sometimes you end up pinching the same one twice because what you thought was a strong one, you took it back and... Um, well, you wouldn't pinch the same one twice because it's not going to grow anymore. But you go to the same tip where you've got several candles. But my initial thing will be to make sure that there's no more than two growths on each tip. So that the end of each branch ends up as a pair. Yeah, And if it's a three, like, no, that isn't a three actually, that's a one and a two. I, I think, quite honestly, I don't see any threes. So I think some work was done on the lower section of this tree not too long ago. Um, and it's been fed very well to get an awful lot of new foliage this year. But that new foliage is nearly all at the top. I mean this branch is quite strong 
you know, it's good good needle mass here, but the lower down you get, the weaker it gets. And the higher up you get, the stronger it gets. So the higher up we get, as we know we've got a good root base, the more of this needle mass will have to come off. And now is a good time to do some of that. Because remember, pines don't stop growing in the winter. There's still a bit of movement going on. And what will go on with these is the needles will spread. Because at the moment you've got a job to even see the buds. <laughs> Next year's candles. So, that's an initial look and an initial chat and outline plans. And those plans are, I think we will get the wiring done, we will thin out the apex, we will make sure that the branch tips are suitable to be grown on next year and are not going to waste any of the energy in the tree on branches that are not going to be kept and sh shoots tips that are not going to be kept. In other words, threes down to twos, etc. So that next year, when it does start to grow, it can be fed strongly to push these candles out hard on wired branches so that we will have our outline to a degree. It won't be perfect by any means. And once you've got your outline, you can see which bits are sticking up. And if, if a candle is sticking outside of that outline, it needs taking back. Always making sure that you leave some needles because um, I've heard in several different videos, if you pinch a candle below the first needle on that candle, you've just stopped that branch ever growing because there is now nowhere to grow. It needs needles and then it'll form the buds. Yeah, or bud or buds. Right, so there we go then. Video one in what will be a probably a three year sequence of videos. Starting from there, so we get a good look at it as it is. And what I will do is um, in each video where the shape of the tree changes, I'll take a still of the tree as it is at the beginning and end of that work. And those can be kept to, to be compared with at a later stage. I don't want to keep the videos themselves, but my software allows me to just press a button and basically take a photo at that point. Um, and they're good quality and everything as well. Then they can go into my photo editor and be cropped and made to look pretty, you know, all that sort of stuff. Backlight, I can adjust backlighting and all that sort of stuff and get a decent picture of the tree as it was at that point. And on the title of the videos, we will put um, the month and the year so that they will form a nice progression and people can drop in at a certain point in time if they choose to do so. Right, so there we go. Birthday tree. <laughs> Thanks again, Gail. And some initial outline plans and thoughts. And I won't say I have all the knowledge I need about Japanese white pines. I've only just started. There's a lot more to learn and get into my thick skull to understand what this tree is going to do next and how I can influence it. And in some cases, stop it doing what it might want to do. <laughs> it's part of what bonsai is all about. <laughs> Because basically that tree wants to be 20 foot tall. Well, we're not going to let it, are we? <laughs> Has to be controlled. Right, there we go then. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by. And again, on the end of the video, if you're not subscribed and you've got to this point, it'd be ever so nice if you did so. Help the channel grow and all that. See you next time. Thanks for dropping by.